Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as our friends over at joanne.com. Week number one, we've already shown you this in our introduction and now we're ready to play together with you. So let's begin week number one. We're gonna be starting off here the, with the sun soaked and then going to uh, vintage white and then here to the um, leaf orange. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna be doing three rows here of sun soaked and then this here is actually two repeat patterns of the section in order to get the diagonal. You can't really see it here but uh, in the certain light that you can see it and then we're gonna be finishing off here with this um, leaf orange for this particular section. So as we move up through the weeks you can see that they're all right here. So you'll notice that even though the colors look the same, they're not the same stitch work. So each one of these five sections is something unique. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna grab my sun soaked jello and I'm gonna be using a 10 millimeter size N crochet hook. The pattern does suggest to use um, a nine millimeter size M. Again, if you change your hook size, just be conscientious. You will change the amount of yarn you will use. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. So without further ado, let's grab our yarn and let's get started right now. So leaving an extra long tail, I want you to leave that longer so that we can uh, work on that later to be able to hide it better with that darning needle. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna start off with the slip knot, put it onto the hook and a lot of this uh, particular pattern has a lot of repeating. So all I need to do is explain to you the instructions and I'm physically crocheting the whole thing behind the scenes as well. So to start off, we're going to be chaining 81. So one, two, three, four, and five and go all the way to 81 maybe back here in just a moment. So now that I have my 81 what I'm just gonna do is turn over the chain and I'm gonna start second chain from the hook. So there's one chain, this is the second and I'm gonna get the back hump of the chain. That's just a personal preference. People ask me why I do that. It's so that it creates a nice one. So just insert your hook to the second chain on the back hump of the chain and single crochet. So continuing along, once you do the first one, do you see how it's like a reptile spine? You just wanna insert to the same section on each one of the chains. So just one single crochet in each one of the back humps of the chain all the way across. This is row number one. So please do that now. Now before I go any further in this project, I'm just gonna lay down the project and I'm gonna follow it back and make sure that you keep it so that you're looking at the same side as you follow it all the way back. What I want you to do on this side here, just insert a hook just through just a piece of the strand that is on this side of the project. So the side that's facing you. This is considered the right side of the project and you're gonna need to know this in the future. So it's best now to put in a stitch marker right here so that if you know that this is facing up then this is the right side. So if it's facing down and it's looking like this, you know you're on the wrong side, so the back side of the afghan. So what we're going to do then is that we're gonna continue then for the next two rows of just doing single crochet. So turn your project and we're just gonna chain up one and just continue right into the same one below and you're just gonna do one single crochet in each of the stitches to the other side. Then you're just gonna turn your work, chain one and one single crochet again all the way back and then we're gonna be done with this color for now. So let me uh, meet you there. So get this row done plus the next row just single crochets and meet me back here and we'll continue on with this pattern. So when I last left you I told you to do the last row plus this one that we're having. So you're gonna have three rows complete. Now they're suggesting the way to change the yarn because we're gonna change the color for the next section as we begin that fancy footwork. So when you come into the last stitch you're just still gonna single crochet but when you pull through you're gonna have your two. Instead of pulling through both of them, just get the next one uh, ready for you. I like to create a slip knot just as a precaution and I like to put it onto my hook and then pull through. And so now the white will be ready to go for the next one. So now I'm going to be um, trimming my sun soaked out. You will not need the sun soak now until the end of the afghan so you can put that away in a safe spot and now we're gonna be playing with vintage white. So I'm going to get you started on the next row and in the next row it's just nice and simple is that we are going to do front loop only for this particular one. So what we want to do is we want to bury in the two strands that we have. So we're gonna chain up one and in the same one that we just came out of you wanna go into the front loop only. So you're just gonna peel it back. Let me just peel it and show you. So the, if you're new to crochet the, the two loops equal a stitch. The loop closest to you is the front loop and the loop furthest away from you is the back loop. So in this case they want you to do in the front loop only. So you're just gonna insert, capture the two stragglers on top of that hook 
and then insert into the front loop. It's gonna be awkward for a few stitches and then what you're doing is you're bearing it so it gets stuck underneath so you don't have to worry about it. So you're just gonna go front loop only. So then go to the next one. So front loop only and continue to bury those in. I'd go about two inches if it were me and I were you and continue with the front loop only. And what we're doing is we're starting to establish the pattern. Um, the setup, it's called the setup rows and that's what we're doing for that. So I think that's about enough. So I'm just gonna let the stragglers just fall out of the way and continue along with the front loop as we begin. This is setup row and this is the first row for that. So let's do that and I will go all the way across front loop, uh, front loop single crochet. So I'm continuing along in the front loop only single crochet and I am just gonna go into my last front loop and then I'm gonna put it down and I'm going to take you back to the diagram. So I'm gonna turn it first and we are going to just do the second row of that established pattern and I wanna show you something before we begin. So right now we're currently on the second row of the setup row. So you'll see that the repeat pattern is right here but that we're not ready for that yet. We have to do the setup row. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna single crochet into the first four single crochets and then we're gonna apply a double crochet in the front post right here. So we're gonna go around this single crochet that is just over the last one and leave this one untouched. And then we simply just uh, single crochet the next three and the fourth one is coming back under the one there and leave the next one untouched. So what this is doing is it's establishing this angle which is part of the setup row and we're gonna continue that same idea going all the way across and this is a repeat pattern as we go. So you basically single crochet three times and then uh, front post uh, then here in the in the one that's already covered and etc. So let's begin setup row number two. So let's begin. We're gonna chain up one and in the first one we're gonna put single crochet into that one plus three more in a row. So that one and this is two, three and four and that's exactly how you want it to go. So the single crochet that this is over top of right here that's the one I want to do the front post double crochet around. So wrap the hook and going into the last one we were just in so right in the row below and just front post double crochet that. And then skip the next single crochet and now single crochet the next three. So one, two and three. Just like that. So we're going to go into the one that we were just in. So it's right here. So front post double crochet around that post and then skip the next single crochet and then single crochet the next three in a row. So I'll show you one more time. So you got that three so come into the one that you were just over top of. Front post double crochet. Skip the next one and single crochet the next three. So I will meet you at the end of this row and then I'll show you how to uh, go on from that point because then we have the established uh, setup rows done and you can see that the angle work is now starting to happen. So I'm coming up to the end and I have the skipping the uh, next one and it's single crochet in the last three. So my stitch counts work out exactly perfectly to my, my counting. So everything should work out for you. If you haven't realized it, see this uh, ridge is coming out. You've now just established what is the right side of the project. So even though I had you put a stitch marker in, see this was the right side. See this? That is showing on the right side. So the other side here is more flat. So that gives you an indication you're on the right track. So now that I'm done this I'm going to just put it, turn it and then put it down and I'm gonna take you back to the diagram because the next four rows are the repeat pattern and you're gonna wanna do that twice. So let's take you back to that and let's zoom in and check it out further. So the repeat pattern is from one, two, three, four. This is the pattern repeat once. So we're gonna do this once and then we're gonna do it twice. So I'm gonna take you through one, uh, one, two, three and four and then you can reverse the video to go back through one, two, three, four again. So what we're going to do is that every other row it changes in the sense of what side that we're working on. So as we begin row number one you're gonna notice that we're gonna do a back post um, double crochet around the existing uh, a double crochet that's here. And so you're gonna keep it so that that ridge stays on the front side. And so when you're on number two you'll be back on the front side again and that you'll see that and then when number three you'll see it on the back side once again. So you will see that this will progressively get the lean and then build it out. Let's try number one. 
So let's try number one. This is the repeat pattern. So you'll come back here when you need to repeat it one more time. So you're gonna chain up one and you're going to single crochet in the first two. So one and two. And now it's a back post double crochet. But you can't see where you need to go. So you just gotta lean it forward and there it is. So see the one that's popping out? That's where you wanna go into. So you're gonna wrap the hook and go right around that same post from the back side. So it's a back post double crochet and double crochet and that will keep that ridge on the back side of the project. And then you immediately skip over the one that you've just skipped over to do that and then you're just gonna jump into the next one for three in a row. So it's just kind of awkward probably just as you get started. Um, I've not done that before so <laughs> so you can probably see that. So one, two, and three. So the counting is the same. So what you wanna do is that you can lead it over and you can see that it carried up. So let's do the next one. So you did three. So wrap the hook go into the double crochet that's there. And pull up and then pull through two and two. So that's a double crochet. So this double crochet that I, or single crochet I just skipped. I wanna skip that and then just come into the next one. So it's right in front of the other double crochet you just did. So one, two, and three and then double crochet around the existing double crochet that's there up in the back and then you skip that one come to the next one and go one two and three. So let's turn it over and you can see how the angle is working out. So the angle is getting more and more and that's exactly what you're looking for. So continue that same pattern going all the way across. So I've now come to the end of row number one. I've just did my double crochet and I skipped the one and I single crochet for the final five in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five. So let's turn our work and see what we've got ourselves into now and you can see that the grooving is really starting to be groovy and we're gonna move up now to row number two of the repeat pattern. So as we begin row number two we're going to chain up one and single crochet in the first two only. And this is like a setup row just for this one stitch is that you are gonna come into the one that you were just over top of and you're gonna apply a double crochet in the front post. You're doing the front post because you can see the work now. So you can see these grooves that are already there. So you only work on the back post when you're on the back side and you need to keep these grooves going forward. So you skip the next one just like you had and single crochet in the next three. So one, two, and three. And then you are going to put a double crochet around this existing double crochet. So a front post double crochet around the other front post double crochet that you can see. And then skip one and then single crochet in the next three. So one, two, and three. And notice the third one is right above where the other one already is. So then you double crochet around that post to keep it moving up. Skip the next one and single crochet in the next three. So please do that all the way across. This is row number two of four of the repeat pattern. So I'm coming up to the end of row number two of the repeat pattern and I'm just doing my front post double crochet here and then all you just have left at the end of that in row number two is you skip one as always and it's just one single crochet. So that's it for row number two. So we're gonna turn our work and go for row number three and now we're back on the back side of the project. You can totally see it now because the grooves are on the other side. So row number three as we begin is that we are going to just chain up one and we're gonna single crochet in the first four. So one, two, three, and four. And then because we can't see anything we're gonna just wrap the hook, turn it over and we are going to be into this uh, front post double crochet that you see. So coming from the back side, so this is called the uh, uh, double crochet in the back post. So just continue around that same post to keep that diagonal going up. Skip the one stitch and just single crochet into the next three in a row. So you technically already know how to do this. We've already done it before in row number one. So one, two and three and then just wrap the hook. Look for the next groove that's there. Make that a double crochet back post. Skip the next one and 
single crochet in the next three. So this is row number three. Please do the same repeat pattern going all the way across and you can see it's really turning out beautifully on the back side. At the end of row number three I've just done my uh, front post double crochet that you can see and then I'm skipping my one as always and there is just three single crochets left at the end of number three. So one, two and three. Now I'm just gonna turn my work and we're gonna begin number four. So number four is the final, the repeat. You should see all these grooves starting to really turn out really quite lovely. Sorry about the background. It seems to, it's the same color as pretty much the, the yarn here. So number four, let's begin. We're gonna chain up one and we are going to single crochet in the first four. So one, two, three, and four. Notice that the fourth one is the same one as where this is sitting. Helps you to see stuff like that. And you're gonna double crochet front post around that same one. And then skip the next one as always. So skip the next one and then single crochet in the next three. So one, two, and three. And we're gonna continue that same pattern going all the way. It's kind of easier when you can see it on the front side in, in order to keep all that grooving going up but it's not a deal breaker. It's not a huge afghan so you really shouldn't be hurting yourself mentally <laughs> at this point. You haven't got into the hard stuff yet. <laughs> if there is such a thing on this one. I haven't really gone through all the rest of the patterns yet. So what I want to do is continue that same idea going all the way for row number four and this will be the end of the repeat. I'll get you there and then I want you to reverse the video back in order to get row number one again and go through one through four one more time. So at the end of row number four I just done my front post double crochet. I'm skipping one and the last three will be a single crochet. So what I need you to do is that I need you to reverse the video back. I'll put the time marker on right now and then you can just time, uh, go back to that spot and then you're just gonna repeat and do this one more time. So repeats row number one through four one more time and meet me back here in just a moment. So now at the end of repeating that one more time and now we're ready to go. So we're gonna turn around and go on the back side. So when it says in the pattern says uh, next row wrong side you should be looking at the wrong side of the project. So how do you know that at this point? All the grooves are on the, on the other side. So for this uh, row only we're just gonna finish off using the vintage white. So chain up one and just uh, do one single crochet in each one of the stitches going all the way across and then we're gonna get rid of this color and move along to leaf orange then to conclude this week's challenge. So let's uh, do that one single crochet in each all the way across. So I'm just coming across single crocheting. I have my other color ready in the background as you can see and I am going to get that ready. So just in the last one don't pull through the final two. Just get the next one up just to create a slip knot if you want to. If you feel like it, you want extra security. I get a bit paranoid just with the yarn so I do that. So just pull it tight and then finish it off. Now just to release the yarn for the vintage white. Do a long tail so you can bury it in. And the next three rows which are the final for this clue will all be done in this leaf orange. Let's uh, begin to work on that next. So now that we've joined our new yarns we're ready now for row number one of using this color. So we're gonna do three rows of this. Do not, uh, we're gonna be breaking it at the end of this uh, uh, section and we're gonna get ready for next week at the end of this. Uh, like not this row but this section. So we're gonna chain up one. In this one here we want to go into the back loop only in order to go all the way across. So see the straggler that you had from the white? You wanna just gather it and I'm just gonna move it so I can show you more. Okay so when we look at the stitch work there's always two strands. Okay and both strands equal the one stitch. So what I want to do is that I wanna play just in the back loop only. So just scooping it up underneath these loose strands and you're gonna bury those underneath. So going in the back loop so it's the furthest loop away from you and insert in. It's gonna be awkward for a few stitches as you bury it but it's great um, to hide your yarn. So pull everything nice and tight. So moving across your row just continue into the back loop only and you maybe you wanna drag that about um, two inches across. So just keep pulling it nice and tight and in the back loop only. So once you've dragged the yarn far enough underneath the stitches you can just safely cut that out of the way. You can always use a tapestry and it'll hide things if you really wanted to as well. So continuing with the back loops only going all the way across. Now you should be speeding up because you don't have to hide anything and then meet me at the end of the row and we'll get there in just a moment. 
So I'm coming up to the end, still going into the back loop right into the very end. And now the next two rows, nice and simple, just turn your work, <laughs> drop all your tools on the floor like I just did. And the next two rows, and this is gonna conclude your clues for today. You're just gonna chain up one and just do one single crochet into each of the stitches across. So please do this row and do it one more time. And what I want you to do is that I'll meet you at the end. We're gonna change our color out and get ready for week number two of our clues. So then we'll see you then next week. So I'll be back in just a moment. I'll get this row and the next row done and then we're ready to play. So we're at the very last one. We're gonna switch out our yarn then for the very final and uh, we're gonna get this ready for week number two of our clues and you're just going to pull through. You can just trim your leaf orange now and when we start then clue number two you're gonna hide all of this and then begin all the fun stuff in week number two. So let's, so let's go back to the studio now and I'll see you next week. Bye bye. So how'd you make out? Success? Mm -hmm. oh, well, you know what? Practice makes perfect and this is a stitch that you can use in the future. So we'd love to hear from you in our social media. Please use our hashtag of handmade with Joanne in order to just tag us so that we can see your creativity going. So next week we're gonna get into this fun, fun stuff and we're gonna progressively get bigger and bigger and bigger. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of Joanne.com as well as us here over at thecrochetcrowd.com. We'll see you again real soon, bye-bye.